What's up, everyone? I'm Seifrik. I'm one of the founders of the Blackthorn FreeShirt project. Uh, this is a recording of our alpha feedback Q&A. It was entirely unscripted, uh, but I'll add the different discussion subjects to the YouTube timeline so that you can easily navigate this almost two hour long conversation. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So when they had normal experience. You, you don't want to have in sub 50 either because that's... Oh, I, I don't even, I don't agree with that at all. We With the normal Uthgard rates, we, we got a guy to uh, 50 in 12 hours. We were pushing it though. 12 hours played. Yeah, yeah, but that's with the adjusted rates back at launch. No, that wasn't with adjusted that. rates. That that was that was like three years ago. Yeah, four it's years different. ago. It's different if you have an established group versus you're just a casual player. Not everyone has the resources to power level people because I know, like Selene, for example, he and a buddy of his would like farm dozens of fins with mentalist thought, and they would get people up to 50 like in 10 hours 12 hours easy but the regular player who had like just a regular group maybe one pboe or something if that it would take them weeks i don't think i'd i don't think i'd mess with it much until a little more testing goes into it to be honest yeah that was that's the plan i think for now like systems like those equally um including economy uh, you know, loot. We've basically just implemented the very basics, the very first version. Uh, we've not really um, thought of fine tuning them. Uh, like for instance, with crafting, crafting gives XP here, but the system itself isn't finalized yet. So everything is pretty much a placeholder in terms of progression rate at the moment. But I think it's already pretty obvious that you'll find plenty of players to say it's too slow, the others will say it's too fast. The main idea behind our progression is not necessarily that it needs to be you know, at a certain pace that you reach level 50, but more so that if you log into the game, you have, regardless of your level, the option to progress in multiple ways that are, you know, in, of equal value, so to speak. In BVE, you may get better loot. In RVR, you will get RPs. Your loot will probably be worse or less controllable. Um, but you'll be able to choose, you know, a path of progression that seems fun for you at the time, which is, well, different from other servers like this Phoenix. Eden, Eden has the BGs, but uh, it's, I don't know. Eden is a, is a is a weird case, but like Phoenix and Uthgard, you basically had no choice but to PVE until 50, then template, and then RVR. We really want to break that mold, and and like that's also why we bolster in in the in the BG, is basically to give players the option to. Well, if you want to be PV, if you want to PvP at level 10, then you can. If you want to PvE, then you can as well. And the idea is not to make one path pathway um, superior to the other in terms of efficiency. But like the pace at which everything happens, none of that is finalized yet. But it's it's good to hear some feedback on it and, and hear, hear people's thoughts. What did you guys, you guys think of the, the RP rate, like the speed at which you gain realm ranks? Felt pretty, pretty normal, as it should. It's probably hard to tell as well because the action was overall pretty low. If you're constantly fighting and getting angst, then it's obviously going to be higher. Yeah. I think it's another one of those things that just needs some more testing and some more values to be equated. I think it seems fine from what it is, but again, it's going to need to be something that will have to be adjusted as time permits. <laughs> Yeah, it's sure. hard to try at level 20, like 10 to 25. Oh yeah, with limited people in there. What about uh, the bolstering system on the whole? Yeah, that, that's fucking nice, to be honest. I was a bit scared of it, but um, it 
turned out much better than I anticipated. Sorry. Altering system, elaborate a little bit. Maybe I'm just unaware of what it was. The fact that you get boosted to like level 35 when you're level 10. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. It's just the insta level, is that all it was? No, I think it brings your damage and your armor factor in par with people that are level 35 in the instance for Thed. Is that correct? Yep. Oh, brings your, but brings your damage values in your armor. Yeah. yeah Regardless sense. if you're level 10 or 30, you're still damaged and is on par. Gotcha, gotcha, scaled gotcha. correctly. No, I think it worked out fine, especially if you're going to focus in on BGs being the, a form of leveling, gearing, alternative measures versus a standard PVE. Yeah, I think the bolstering was, was nice. It's going to be able to have folks that are lower level uh, be able to be able to still level with folks that are higher tier level. So bolstering, I think, is... Something needs to be adapted and, and worked on, you know, whether it's this this or this DAC or any other versions. I think it's something that the genre needs. How does the XP work for the bolstering? If you're in, is it only work in RVR zones or is it going to be intended to work in EXP zones? And how will that experience of the bolstered lobby, like how will that work? The bolstering will be uh, exclusive to the BG. So all the other zones will be just regular leveling, and including the RVR zone. So I would assume that the XP is going to be pretty boosted then for those people and will help power level them up. Um, you mean when they participate in, in open RVR in the Frontiers? I guess it's just like I'm asking like, um, like as the lobbies participate with high level people and they get kind of like they get to kill high level stuff is the xp going to be like nerfed for them or does it does the xp get bolstered a bit too to to make it more on par and, oh, and give them a big chunk yeah in the, in the ranky no in the ranky most xp is based on the level you're currently at so if you like everyone is kind of equalized and if you make a kill um, a level 10 will get like 10% of his level, but a level 35 will also get like 10% of his level. So I guess relatively speaking, the higher level has an advantage, but overall it's not that big of a difference. But if you go to open RVR, then there's no bolstering and the typical big XP, um, big RPs, when you're low B killing uh, high level players will be the case. So basically you'll probably leave at like 35, 36, unless you zoom past it, I guess. Um, at that point, we want to transition into the, the gearing phase, like the templating phase, because we want to attract as many casual RVR players into the frontiers which basically means players who are not 100% dedicated to RVR just yet, because uh, that lowers the threshold for, for performing well, for being competitive. And one of the reasons um, that players refuse to take part in, in Frontiers RVR is because they don't feel ready yet. Either it's um, realm rank based, uh, gear based, level based, you name it. And obviously we can't really, uh, well, we can bolster people, but I think that takes away a bit too much of the charm. Um, so leveling is out of the, out of the question. We are not going to give free realm ranks, <laughs> so you can forget that as well. So the only thing we can really do is, is make sure that people get their templates or at least the first form of their template relatively easily so that despite being lower, lower level in the frontiers, they can still, um, with certain confidence, participate in the RVR because the RVR will grant them benefits and bonuses that are better in this case than, than any PVE. So, but like that's, that's a bit of the, of the picture be, beyond the ranky. But it'll be like a completely new experience. And we have considered that there's a risk that 
if the BG is too attractive, like with the ball string, you can basically just re-roll in like under two hours and you're back in the BG at level 10, right? But like, for instance, all the, the fun active RAs, like volley and, and stuff like that, they're level 40 plus. So if you want to like unlock the full potential of your character, you're going to have to take a, take a step further than the BG. I'm curious to hear some thoughts on the orbs, the orb system, and loot in general in the BG. I like how you could uh, loot uh, other people from their orbs. That was nice. Um, the idea and the logic seemed good. Uh, drop rates are a little slow for, like, Sid. Uh, I like how there's different level tiers of it. And, um, but yeah, it's a nice alternative to... Uh, just sitting there trying to farm for one consistent thing. I mean, obviously you can still farm for something, but it was a nice alternative to the game, along with the bolstering. Yeah, it's definitely not finalized yet. We've already um, have some changes in the pipeline, but the basic premise seems all right. And we the were... value that they're dropping at the rate seemed okay. I mean, there wasn't too many times that you were left with less to be desired gear, whether it be green or gray or blue. So it seemed to work out well. Yeah, we were considering to make them drop off players as well, instead of just mobs and guards and shit. But Maybe for like a Dinkery for a BG, that would be sufficient, but I don't know about an RVR. Because, I mean, you're wanting to have alternative ways to level an RVR and bring people out. I think as much as you can plug into a BG, it would be probably beneficial to achieve what you're wanting to get. Yeah, it's, it's still like a prototype, so to say. But um, I think the principle itself has been positive so far. Is anyone... Um, particularly uh, invested in the idea of keeping like the the actual old school classic keeps and old school map layout and stuff like that or personally i don't like them to classic keeps i play with guard but i don't like the keeps the keeps are like fun to run past from a nostalgia perspective but to play in yeah, they're, they're just don't. I mean, you don't get murder holes. You don't get so many. They're too things. primitive. Yes, yeah. they're too. Yes, it's just too primitive. It was made in the dark age of game design. Yeah, I agree. Okay, that's good. That's good feedback. Um, it took us some effort to try and fit the the new keep in the old map, but I think we'll be able to push that trend forward into old frontiers, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, would it have been easier to have just modified the keep to be slightly smaller? The the one that's in Tidranki now? Or... <laughs> yeah, because did you have to flatten the land out and all that to, yeah, to yeah. fit all this? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think this was the the smallest viable version that uh, MT was was able to to produce. So, gotcha. And looks good. Yeah, it's a big ass way. keep. Yeah. You know, if it will be probably even more challenging because you're working with those elevated hills, which only have a limited size as well. So a lot of terrain modeling will be necessary, I think. What do you guys use for the terrain editing? Is there like an in-game in, in uh, game tool that you guys use for that? I believe MT um, is using either an Uthgard tool or... Just have you, I'm not sure if you've seen the the history of Dark Age of Camelot. There was like a video at some point, mm -hmm. and there they showed that the the terrain height is determined by like a, a grayscale JPEG. Basically. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I think Empty is basically just working with paint. <laughs> And, oh seriously yeah, dude i could probably help him with that there's um there's other games that use that kind of stuff oh okay it's like world world builder or whatever that thing's called uses that shit yeah that'd be great i think um he'll probably be open to uh some input on it let's see i'm thinking about did did we miss anything and rp xp loot structures um I think that's about it. 
I think you were mentioning that you're gonna keep uh, Alpha open for a little bit longer. No, I'm mm -hmm. just kidding. No kidding, kidding. I'm kidding. No, uh, longer than the 9th of December, you mean? <laughs> yeah, no, I was just just kidding. No, for yeah, I heard sometime in February. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> well, we meant 2024, so. Hey, I mean, in a in a serious serious way, I mean, why can't we keep it up? at its current state for long periods of time. I know you need to like test on it and stuff, but you could uh you could just leave it up anyway. I mean what's what's the harm? Um yeah this topic uh passed passed the discussion list in uh, in our internal uh, chat. So that's kind of how we came up with the with the last announcement. I don't know if some of you played the first alpha but basically every time we opened until now was pretty chaotic for us, um, in part because we're working with prototype systems and we haven't polished each and every system individually yet. So like when someone says, oh, this item doesn't work or this fault keeper doesn't work or we're like, yeah, we know, <laughs> but that wasn't really the focus of the test. So it's going to be like down the list of the priorities. Um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so what happens if multiple people are playing in the background is things get reported that are valid, and we appreciate that. But it's like you're getting pointed from, from point A to B to X to Y to Z, whereas we decided we want to... Like, we've basically proven that our concept is now viable, like... We've had players who've never played the game before say, yo, this is fun, and they're excited about it. But also veterans and, and other people are generally enthusiastic. So now we want to take it to the to the next stage where, you know, when you craft an item or when you do something that's not necessarily within the scope of the test, we can at least say, well, the system is where it's supposed to be, so... If you think there's a bug, then the validity of that report is going to be much higher um, and the overall experience should be much, much better as well. So that's that's like a, we, we kind of want to do the next step up, so to say. And also towards the next stage beyond level 35, we want to be able to rely on what we've done so far on, on the first few levels in that we won't have to go back and say, okay, now we tested everything conceptually, and now we have to polish everything and spend another half a year on it, for, so to speak. We want to like round this, round this topic off, um, start polishing every sy system one by one, and really test it specifically and, tar and in a targeted way, and then work towards probably some type of beta experience where you start at level one, and maybe there's a level 35 cap Maybe not, but depending on how polished we get everything, um, it should be like a, a full experience because we've only like, with exploration as well, for example, right now you can run into a zone and you'll get an exploration tick, which is, I mean, it's cool, but it's really shallow, you know? We want to deepen that out a lot more. We want to have extra incentives to clear a dungeon, uh, to find hidden places, or to get surprised by like an area where you you find a mushroom circle or something and, and a mob spawns or some type of, some type of mini quest or event spawns. Um, you know, there's so many possibilities with that. Uh, and we wanna, we wanna like zoom in on those first and to really create that, that full experience um, instead of, for instance, we could now also go for um, a 35 to 50 experience, uh, open another alpha, and then do the same as we did in the last two. But we would basically be getting ahead of ourselves too much and probably feel too overwhelmed. So we kind of want to round off this topic first. And then, because a lot of systems will carry over, you know, once you've installed, for instance, the the mini events or the treasure chests in the dungeons or the exploration stuff, the crafting stuff, 
like all these systems they carry over into level level 35 plus to 50. So if the baseline is set for those, um, the next few stages will go much easier and much more streamlined. So that's kind of why we are opening up the, the internal testers now rather than um, keeping this test going and, and um, keeping ourselves distracted, so to speak. It's not, it's not because we want to deny you guys, but uh, it's mostly because we want to be as efficient as we can be. I guess I can add to that as well is um, we, it's really hard to communicate everything we have like stored. Um, I just mentioned exploration, for example, and I don't think I've really dived deep into those um, publicly yet. But the same goes for crafting. Um, there's, I can probably give you a, a small spoiler. We're working on a system that will allow players to forgo their use or reliance of auto hotkey. So an integrated system where classes will play more smoothly with just a few slash commands. Um, you know, there's there's so many so many stuff, um, so many things we're working on. But and that's also why I can I want to do a voice a voice moment where. It's easier to uh, to communicate these things, but if you add everything up like that, it's like when you get an, a bug report about something, and in my mind, I'm going like, okay, it's bugged, it's true, but even if it's bigger fish bugged, to fry, yeah, even if it wasn't bugged, you you would be two or three steps behind where you want to be. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I guess one thing we haven't implemented yet, which we, I guess, plan to do was, was Realm Honor. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that at all or, or how much I've communicated around that yet. I remember something about that during pre-alpha, but I didn't notice anything. Yeah, here. none, of, none no. of that is, is implemented yet. It's still uh, on paper very much. Is to give players the option to reward other players uh, with a, well, not a currency, but like a, a progression element um, that will be valuable uh, and that they can grant others based on their perspe perception of their interaction with them. So, I mean, it, technically you could do that with gold as well, but I've never had the... Um, an occasion in Dark Age where I helped someone and someone said like, oh, thank you, here's like 10 gold. I'd, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd also be like, yeah, you don't need to pay me for that, you know? Um, but basically, you'll be able to grant someone else Realm Honor. Uh, and then Realm Honor itself will be a system that allows you, let's say, faster crafting speed, uh, faster travel speed, faster hastener speed, maybe. Um, uh -huh. You'll be able to get some uh, quality of life merchants, um, potions. Um, I don't know, an extra vault key, uh, account vault keeper. You know, perks like that, which is valuable. It's not. It's not going to be the end of the world if you don't have those. But it's something nice to have and something to work towards. And at the same time, it'll be a a metric we can use to safeguard realm loyalty although it's not the primary function but it does tie into that we basically want to make it so it's a valuable quality of life dimension which you can progress in progress in through um social well conduct so to say um, and then i mean obviously you'll be you'll be able to accumulate it by playing the game you know much like you uh, have guilt guilt merit points in a sort of similar way you'll be able to uh, to earn realm honor points as well um, so it's it'll not strictly depend on, on the social aspect but it'll, but that will be part of it and then for instance if you want to swap if you want to sw swap realms this is not finalized but the f the first idea we have is that if you swap realms first you will start depleting your realm on our credit on your old realm and once that's below a certain threshold 
then you will start earning realm honor in the new realm. <laughs> so not only will you have no quality of life, so to speak, in the new realm, you will also like punish your your older realm uh, experience, which in my mind should be strong of an, strong enough of, of of a deterrence to prevent players from casually hopping back and forth, unless of course you're like strictly RVR oriented, you have set up guilds on both realms and stuff like that, then yeah, sure. You're not gonna, you know, care much about 50% crafting speed or something. So yeah, that's like a whole other system that's mentioned, but not even remotely implemented yet. So we wanna tick all those boxes uh, one by one now. I have a question about um, classes and races and class race combo combos most more spe uh, more specifically. Do you Troll shadow blade. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start with the uh, with the cat the catacombs races, right? Do you think those are should be in the game or from the start or not at all? I mean, it literally depends where you draw the line regarding nostalgia. Mm. We were probably planning on not having them at release, but probably unlockable to a certain degree. I think if we have them, they'll probably be relatively rare. It shouldn't be the case where everyone's like half over and yeah, you're like, I'm sick of this. <laughs> That's what it'll turn into, though, eventually. If... Eventually, probably, yeah. Uh, I'm not really sure how, how we're going to deal with that, but it's a bit of a toss-up because, like, Half Ogre, I don't know, you have you love it or hate it, I guess, but, like, Frostolf is, in my eyes, pretty neutral. Char as well, it's like, it's, uh, it is what it is, you know? Oh, I don't know. That sure, Frostolf sure makes really good casters on mid. I guess the downside to HO is you've got those, what they look like, running around on your realm, so got mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it's like once they're there, you can't really unsee them. Personally, I love the Frost off. I love, I love those characters, but if they're not in the game, they're not in the game. It's Make it to where you have to unlock it and you can only make one per account. I'm not serious, but... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, it, it'll probably be something relatively exclusive. Uh, but nothing nothing is uh, set on that yet. That's probably something we'll do post-release. Same as, yeah. as potentially opening up uh, custom races with custom class combos. That's yeah, also literally. a can of worms, because you don't want Lyricine Bards... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's some some combo troll, obviously. Troll shadow blade. Oh yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's some combos are obviously out of bounds, but I'm thinking like Sylvan Champion, for example. I've always wondered why why is that not a thing? Can we have a Saracen Friar, please? Uh I'm <laughs> oh. <laughs> here, but please. No, you better not. <laughs> you know, certain classes and certain races based off of what patch set you're going to be using I think is going to be the more important factor in in what perspective well I mean so you're intending to primarily just use 1.65 though correct mm, well that's the starting point yeah sorry I'm just thinking I think you're going to have some conflict if you have uh, I don't know, maybe. I just have to think about it more because I think you're going to have some gameplay that could be conflicting, especially if you're introducing the classes or, or the races in front of the classes, I think maybe a potential issue. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely risky because you have a, a few iconic classes that can only be like certain races, like Healer, for example, or Shaman. If you start mixing those up, then suddenly it could be extremely confusing and hard to judge uh, which class you're potentially dealing with from range. That's true. So 
it's it can be very dangerous to just start mixing everything up. But yeah, that's still quite hypothetical. I guess I'm I'm curious curious about our play base as well. Is like I'm sure you're all well aware that Eden is launching uh, in the second. Uh, I'm just curious to hear your thoughts on on what you think of Eden and and how other surfers match up to that. I thought it was like crazy changes, like way more than I was used to. So I I didn't really like like that. But I'm I'm probably like a very small minority because I like kind of the older style of shit. But some people want that, you know, that extreme mod experience. Everything's different. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it just wasn't for me. Cap for own points. I don't know. It seems kind of muff. Having to re-level every season, re-template. I don't know. Not for me. Not gonna do it. Did you guys try season one? For like a whole of like 30 minutes. Like I didn't like how much crazy stuff there was and I was pretty much done with it right there. Yeah, for me it was like uh, my friends played so I was like, yeah, sure. I wasn't really excited about it either. Then I played for you know, a month, month and a half maybe. I think you'll see a percentage of the player base come and play this versus Eden just based off of, I mean, whether it's going to be Pilzerg or Poloimo Zerg or some of those minions, just based on the fact that even the casual player can still be competitive over here and don't have to sit there and re-template every season or re-level or re-gear. And so I think that's advantageous for what they're trying to do as far as their player base is concerned. Now, from an AV8 standpoint, I don't know. It might be better suited the way that they have their layout, but I don't know. I do have a question for you. Do you plan on bringing, and, and maybe currently you do, do you have some of their staff that you're looking to bring over from Phoenix or Eden as far as game managers or masters or some of their staff? Um, we are always on the lookout for uh, quality people, but I think it's the big problem is like, for instance, I don't know if you know about Abyss. It's one, another uh, open day project. Uh, they're also like in pre-alpha or something. And they're doing something quite similar to us. Smaller scope, I'd say, probably more customized as well. And I thought, well, it's quite similar, you know, I'll talk to them and see maybe you want to cooperate or, you know, merge or it was pretty clear pretty soon that they weren't interested. And that's from a project that's already like settings wise, really similar to ours. So I think based on that, it's probably not evident to find people that are, um, you know, in the closet, so to speak, like an Eden dev who is like, ah, I kind of want to do classic, but Eden is most popular. So like, I'm just doing this now. We're definitely not like actively headhunting or something like that. I don't think that's very wise because the word spreads anyway. And, you know, it's, it's bad blood and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have talked with an Uthgard developer and well, they were also aiming to do something similar to us. And they've also been working on it for a while. And we've had, I think, two or three days of intense discussion. And But also from there, you know, uh, let me think. Okay, so for example, they were considering to completely overhaul all the monsters and all the mob placements and maybe even the level ranges, like completely do uh, a new mob layout of, of the entire realm in all realms, just to switch things up a bit. And in my mind, that's like, why would you do that? You know, it's like a big part of why people play classic is, is the nostalgia and seeing the water beetles and, and you know, black thorns and fucking, and you name it, any mob that you, that you're, that you're familiar with. It's like, it feels, it feels good to be back there, you know? But when all the mobs are different, yeah, the map is the same, but you take a part of that away. And, you know, it's it's in the little 
the little design decisions or design choices like that, that it's very easy to start diverging and end up somewhere completely different just based on personal preferences or thoughts on how a good server works or, or how you attract players or so what they kind of offered was we step into their project instead of the other way around because they had the quote unquote superior play uh, su superior code base um, they had more tools uh, but they were just two people so they were like maybe we can merge but we were also in the same position like we have pretty much everything laid out we have uh, the whole design thing done um, well done is, is a big word but like the, the the blueprint is there you know um so it was basically you're trying to merge two visions and you're working with two groups of people who are confident and are actually also fine with it not working out you know nobody's really willing to compromise too much uh so well on paper i was like super enthusiastic like this is this is a golden opportunity. If we merge, it'll be huge. But at the end of the day, we decided, well, let's just not do it for now. And let's start, let's just work on our own project and see where things go. And then maybe in the future, like if we blow up at some point or if they launch and they're bigger than us, we'll probably start talking again. But for now, it's proven quite difficult to like actively find people. Um, and I think as, so long as we can stick to what we're doing and internally, we ha I think we have a really good atmosphere. So we kind of want to preserve that and through that, keep our efficiency high, our productivity high um, and our motivation high as well, because this is not going to be done in you know the next two or three months. Um, so while we're probably not working at the fastest pace or have the most um, productive members, work is being done at a steady pace um, and people are feeling, from my perspective, good about it. And I don't sense any imminent burnout or so, which we did kind of have after the first alpha. Um, but on, in, on that front, it's, it's looking much better now, despite Eden launching and ooh, all the hype. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic and I think we just, the other day, like last week, we, uh, someone contacted us with a lot of developer experience. He's just set up his, uh, his own, um, uh, dev environment today. Um, so our team is growing steadily, but slowly. Uh, and I think this is probably the best way to do it. Like if we grow beyond, beyond, um, our, 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 our means, then I'm afraid we'll have to start compromising on, on the vision. And you know, you know how that goes. You release prematurely or, you know, features are not there or we, we really want to prevent that. Like we are well aware that if, if we launch a server, that's our one shot. You know, it's been pretty consistent in the past. Like, if a server launches and the experience is not up to par, barely any player will give us a, a true second chance. Like even Eden, oh, for example. That's the way for any game, whether it's AAA or an indie yeah. game. I mean, do you you have one shot, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. No Man's Sky has entered the chat. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really brutal. Um, but we also plan on like, keeping the server open you know so it will be a really a real waste if we if we blow it on on any any kind of uh, rushing or, or compromising or mm -hmm. that's that's basically why we started this this server as well like there's been so many servers before like yes we're doing classic everyone is excited and then it releases and then the reality kicks in and it's like this is not really what it could have been right and then, and then yeah the first the first um 
moment is gone and then people are start leaving and then the whole concept is burned and then it's done. Domino effect. Yeah. I guess from playing Eden, Uthgar, Phoenix, and all the other ones, I would be very hesitant on bringing in some of their GMs as, as they bring in biases that aren't always conducive for your game base. And um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's a bad vibe, to be honest with you. A lot of those folks. Yeah, we're I think it should be very strict. Load them in. Sorry? Vote them in and vote them out. If they're doing some shady shit, call them out, and they should get removed. Um, I'm not a big fan of democracy, personally. <laughs> All right, Stalin. <laughs> no, but I mean, sometimes it's clear that someone is not, you know, with the system, so to speak. Well, they have an agenda. They have their own direction. Yeah. I mean, and that's fine, you know, but... We are so deep into it now that the vision is kind of there. And if you're at every turn trying to bend it, then it's not going to work out. Like, even if you are a great coder or something. Um, and I think it's really important to to keep that that kind of uh, harmony within within the team because it's really disruptive. Once you have one or two people like that, the people that were initially maybe the most productive or the most um, big proponents of, of the thing we're building will start, you know, backing off and being becoming more uh, more distant, and, and then eventually everything rots, and then you're left with I don't know a handful of people who do sometimes something which is like um, in the direction of where you want it, but not quite and then at every turn you have to like start debating and it's it's impossible to work like that i'm thinking if we should have we should cover some other topics but I'm, i can't really think of anything right now i just got here so i missed most of it i don't really know what was covered so i will refrain we basically covered the, the Tiranki experience at the beginning, like the XP progression, the RPs, uh, the loot. The, um, I guess we didn't really explicitly cover the participation system yet. Like the thing where you have like a, a tick of XP and RPs and gold every, I don't know, five minutes. But it's, I don't know. It's... Actually, it may, it, it may be worth uh, talking about because our the idea behind it was so you zone into the to, into the BG and the first question is what the hell are you gonna do? Uh, are you gonna kill mobs for XP even though you're in the BG so you're probably not really there for XP or are you gonna try to roam and you know with especially with low pop you're gonna roam and, and risk not getting any progression, right? Because if you don't find ink, you're just running around for nothing. So the idea behind the participation tick was you can at least start by killing mobs or kill some guards or, you know, doing whatever semi-productive thing in the BG should give you a baseline of, uh, of recurring progression to at least motivate the player to, or reward the player for, you know, being active. A big part of creating action in the BG is just players going out there, even if it's to kill a, a mob for orbs. And I was wondering if any of you ever had the feeling that uh, it's not really worth going to the BG because I can't progress there or I won't get RPs or I won't find anyone. And obviously with low pop, it's always going to be partially like that. But I was wondering if anyone had any thoughts on that, like maybe ideas on how to improve it with low pop or stuff like that. 
Uh, my only main concern, I guess, would be like just trying to find people to play with. Like it's the chat system and all that is pretty much your your main method as it always has been. But is there any some sort of system we could do to like show what groups are out there so you could just see who's there and start messaging? Well, there's always slash who did, of course, but right well yeah you're but you're messaging like random names yeah. like if there was only a way that you could like delve who's got who's group leaders and then just display group leaders that's a good idea for sure we also um considered uh, and actually planned on on adding auto grouping yeah that's the next thing i was going to say it would have been a good idea if you could like if you could do like flag your group as being looking for more yeah. and then people could auto group in and have it be optional because there's some buttheads that you know they don't want anybody in their group but they're yeah. their friends and that's it so and that's fine but yeah it'd be cool for the newbies to just be like oh there's a group and just jump in yeah absolutely i think that's definitely going to be part of the eventual layout social element is is incredibly important and yeah, no. There's always the argument like, oh, if you don't, if you if you do have our auto grouping, you're gonna devalue the experience of grouping. Yeah, I guess to an extent. But if the result is that, you know, let's say seventy percent of players don't get a group, whereas they would with auto grouping, then yeah, it's hard to compete with that kind of uh, metric. Well, auto grouping is going to pull in whatever the hell you get subjected to, which could be all sorts of shenanigans, which you might not like. So you could maybe also implement something like, well, look, we're looking for tanks of this variety of this class or whatever. Yep. And, and then that way you can kind of keep the, you know, the melee scout out or whatever you're, you're dealing with. Yeah, I think we're also looking to possibly expand that concept towards PvE. Because at the, at the end of the day, even if you have auto grouping, you still need a leader in, in, in the BG yeah. as well. Someone needs to run the train, you know? Oh, for the Zerg? Yeah. Not, not well, then you could... for the Zerg, for a group as well. Like, someone has to lead or drive, <laughs> let's say. Maybe take that system that you're going to make and then apply it to the BGs as well. Mm -hmm. I think... Um, we had some other suggestions. There was auto grouping and oh yeah, of course. Um, so that's for finding allies, right? But you also have to, well, you don't have to know, but it really helps if you know that you have some intel on whether there are enemies out there. Because with kill spam, you know, you get a hint of it, but there may be five or six, seven, eight players um roaming around trying to kill you or find you but you just happen to always miss them or you know you, you die to the one group of three players and you think oh it's not really worth going out even though there's like four players roaming the outskirts which are dying to meet you so to speak um so we we were also thinking of like detection systems or some kind of trigger point where if you remember, pass there, then a message pops up like an enemy is here. Or I remember on uh, New Frontiers, uh, what do you call it, the BGs. There was regions within the BG, and you could tell where the action was by where the death spam was because it would say that someone was killed by the ruins or whatever, right? And you'd know exactly where that was, or there was like other, like some kind of past or whatever. I, I don't remember the names of any of them now, but I remember back in the day that there, they had all these names, all these regions within the, say, Sidranki. Yeah, I think I think that's definitely, um, and even also for kill spam, that's probably a good idea. I'd be very careful though because if you're giving away your if you if you're giving away somebody's position and they're a small man maybe that's they want to stay like they want to stay small and if somebody sees a kill spam you know and they're hungry enough you know they'll come over and just flatten a, a poor one guy that just managed to get a kill and there's six up his ass all of a sudden so I don't necessarily know if I'd agree with like 
giving exact locations like that but i would say like maybe implement what was that what was the server that had those flags that everybody would like go to was that i think phoenix was that phoenix okay so something like that where it's like almost a rotating spot that's highlighted like and maybe give them a very small incentive if you're in there the whole time i don't i don't know i'm not i'm not saying do that but like highlight an area and be like hey if you want to fight this is the spot to go and then you know have people show up maybe there's some sort of an incentive to be there just showing up i don't know but you could also maybe apply that to smaller groups so if you're in an eight man group it's going to tell you hey this is the spot for the eight mans mm -hmm. but if you're in a three man hey, there's threes over here. And then that way you're not like getting freaking hosed by these huge groups all the time. I don't, I don't know. That's, I like that idea more than being like, yo, somebody just got whacked at the ruins and then now everybody's zerging yeah, towards yeah. the ruins to get that one guy. Yeah, I mean, you could um, limit the, the visibility to enemies that are your size or higher. So that like, You'll only, you'll only get the spam of like larger groups or of equal size or maybe one one guy less or whatever. So that as a solo, you pretty much see everything. You have like full vision. But if you're a five man, isn't like, that the point of RVR though? Isn't that the point of going out there and having that chance where you are gonna backdoor somebody and oh. potentially take out ten or twelve people as a three man, or sure. might get zeroed down? Like, isn't that yeah. kind of the point? We can make it a that's, universal that's, spot. That's that's the inherent risk that you take. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you could make it just like a big area. Like, this is the spot maybe even make it a keep or something like this keep is the the, the one that way because nobody uses keeps anymore like people you can put all the mm -hmm. cool stuff you want in keeps and everybody just wants eight man and they avoid keeps so if you could figure out a way to make keeps a reason that maybe you could implement that but if if the certain people in the community heard me even say that they'd be shrieking right now so you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt but i mean there's got to be some way to implement it I mean, it could also be pretty nice if you had ways of, you know, temporarily taking yourself out of the notification system. Like, even if you kill someone, you're, you're invisible. Nobody will get notified. What about Anon? Sorry? Anonymous? Anonymous? If yeah, that's an exactly. option. Like, for like, I don't know, five minutes, then your next kills will not get re registered, so you can like stealth a keep or stealth a tower or you know push towards a certain xp spot or whatever and you gotta be careful with that though so what if pills takes his 150 man zerg yeah, yeah. goes in on for five minutes and yeah of course it, it, it like, be... it, you've got to be careful with that like, yeah that's why i was saying you'd want to have it be more like filtered down but it, that word will get out. Like people will be in a small man group just to give the heads up, like "Yo, it's over here," and then the Zerg exactly. will rush over that way. So exactly. Exactly. you got to think of ways that people will cheat it. Yeah, sure. But like yeah. that's part of the dynamic, right? You can use that, let's say, anonymous uh, buff. But if you're spotted by a, by an enemy realm, they will communicate it regardless of being anonymous, anonymous right? So like uh, then again. I guess that's the art that was the argument originally was isn't that the point of RVR? You may run in to that 150 man sure. death ball. I mean, it's what where do we but draw the many, line? But how many times has a small man stretched out a Zerg and killed 40 of them? Because sure. you got... well, they're not gonna yeah. kill them themselves, but they can share intel, right? Yeah, you swoop in with a whole bunch of volcanic pillars, you can do some work. <laughs> Yeah, oh shit, yeah, especially with all RAs. Uh huh. Yeah, but the, that's the good thing about the rank it's, it's really uh, a confined space. Whereas once we start contemplating old frontiers uh, mechanics, it's gonna start a lot, becoming a lot more complex. 
Yeah. Like we might we might be just adding too much. Like we should just focus on the core mechanics. Yeah. I think that I think that auto grouping system is a good idea because that would that would transcend just one small area. That could be used in PVE, PVP, mm. PVG, raid, whatever you want to do. It's a, it's a system that's useful from beginning to end. Uh oh, there's another thing about the orbs. We were talking about how so basically now you can choose which piece you want to have generated if you have a shiny orb and then Ooh. you put like an item in your backpack you drop the orb on the item and then it generates that item well that's, that's item. cool but then from there we started thinking well actually you don't really need the npc to to generate your your item from your orb right it's just a way of making sure players need to carry the orb around from a certain location back to another point so that there is a risk of getting killed while, while you're doing that. But if it's possible to transform your orb just from switching it around in your backpack and not necessarily having to hand it in to an NPC, we thought, well, we could also just create zones in which that action is possible. So you still have to like move to that zone to be able to materialize your orbs. But you don't necessarily need one specific focal point where, you, where that's possible. So that would allow us to create areas where, you know, there's a real incentive for going there because you're materializing your your loot but at the same time it's a it's a it's a defined space so the risk of uh, encountering enemies there is higher or well really high because even if you're not handing in orbs this is the place where you're going to wait for for finding enemies i think this could be a, a nice segue in the merging between orb system and um, trying to guide players a bit more when there's uh, low action or low population. Well, maybe instead of a maybe instead of a spot on in the, on the map, what about a cooldown or something like that you could apply to it? So, because that kind of disrupts gameplay potentially. Maybe not always, but it, it disrupts gameplay for some people who maybe just want to PVE, or maybe they they're like a small man and they don't want to they don't want to deal with any of that stuff you know, or whatever. So could it, could it be just a cooldown that would that would also that that way you'd be self sufficient. You may be getting more than you can burn in the cooldown a lot of time, and so then it still gives people that opportunity to like maybe run up on you and, and grab some, but yeah. also doesn't prevent them that person from having oh crap now i gotta the spot i need to level is here and the spot i need to go is all the way over there so that's actually a good idea it, it gives complete freedom in where you want to move and, and that was a bit of a problem especially at the beginning where if you're constantly roaming you, you may you may find rocks but the typical natural flow is you keep roaming until you die you know you're never gonna go back to PK, it's not really natural. So if having it timered, it's, or, or even in regions, but like timers is even more natural because you can go where you want to go. I can already imagine if you're like incentivized to go to a certain area to hand in your orbs, but you're also risking them by doing so yeah. really, really, really hard, then yeah, it can cause more frustration than benefit. But with a timer, that's completely out of the question. So that's probably a good a good way to to approach it. Yeah. This is probably the most valuable type of feedback so far, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Most of the time, I can't get a group unless my guild's on, and then I can get a group. But in order to be cash in my my orbs, I would be very susceptible to just getting rolled. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah so then there's literally less incentive to be a small man at that point. Now you're incentivizing. Well, if you want the if you want to keep your orbs, you roll deep and carry a big stick. But yeah, there's, how do you do that? It's, there's no um, you zerg. That's how you do it. You you roll in with a fat wad of like fifty guys. You go in the zone. You buy what you need. And you there, bounce. There isn't fifty. There well, isn't. Yeah, I mean later or whatever, whenever it launches or whatever. That's probably probably something we want to think about as well. Like these mechanics are all well and good, but if the end result is it's by far the best strategy to just zerg it down, then you may want to rethink it. But I think it will I will be... Be... Sorry, go on. Sorry. No, no, you can go ahead. Uh, so I was, uh, just going to say, I think it will be quite a... Um, like having it like on a timer will be quite a natural way of doing it anyway, because at the start of the server, it's going to be Zerg v Zerg. People are going to want to play in yeah. the battlegrounds. It's going to be bolstering. It's not going to be a place, if you want to go and level solo and you only want a PvE in the corner against the boars, it's not going to be the place for you. It, it doesn't really make sense to go there when there's 200 people all killing each other. You're just not going to have a good time. But later in the server's life, when people are sort of heading more towards end game and there's only say you know 40 people in feed and it's a lot easier to do that then you want to be able to just you know do it in a group of two or three and it's not going to be a problem to do that because you, you can be more self-sufficient at that time so it's it's kind of a system that works both for zergs and for solo but not simultaneously it just completely depends on on how fit is at that point like you're not going to be able to go in and solo when it's zergy and you're not going to be able to go and zerg if there's only four people in there but at both times, you can still get orbs, hold on to them for long enough to cash them in, um, and that you know that that system works for both. I think if it's super chaotic, then it I don't know it it may come to a point where you're you get the feeling that you can never really you know um, get the benefit of them, you know, because say you go out you fight, you get some orbs, then you die, you lose them, you go out again, you lose them again, like... No, yeah, I think it, like, it depends on what sort of time you put on it, and the timer could even be linked to the population. So when it's really zergy, it's only a 40 second timer before you can cash it in. When it's super quiet, it might be like a three minute timer, so there's a bit more risk. Um, obviously, you know, that, that's something you can look at depending on how many people are losing their orbs without cashing them in and sort of adjust those timers but i think if you're running in a zerg um like on the opening days you will die a lot but there'll definitely be periods where you're up for you know anywhere from 30 seconds to 10 minutes at a time so you should you know, definitely have time to cash a few of your orbs in if you're not having to run anywhere to do it if you're just doing it based on you know a cooldown system where it's like that time now elapsed you can do whatever you want to do with that orb and just do it on the run while you're still fighting that's another hey, kind of thing I am really kind of worrying about right now is our server turning into an inventory manager simulator. Mm. Yes. Yeah, there is a little bit of that if you're sort of just constantly watching the timers rather than playing the game. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be like Phoenix. Oh, new zone. Oh, let's just go get the credit and then AFK for 25 minutes till the zone changes. Like, zero point in that. Yeah, it becomes chasing the. Uh, yeah, exactly. You're just you're just playing the mini game. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing with the orbs would be to um, obviously still have the merchant at the keep. You know, so you, if you're PVEing, you can just run straight back up the hill and whatever. It's a bit safer. But for groups that are roaming, just have more than one of those merchants. Have them sort of dotted around the map, so that as you're roaming, you just pass one on the way and try and try and get your hand in there, but not like just one where every group sitting there waiting for you if there's like six or seven of them dotted around in random locations you're less likely to be sort of jumped on while roaming past one yeah it's a bit it's a bit tricky like every type of uh, way of doing it seems to have its pros and cons but yeah and a lot of that comes down to the population as well because it's much harder to have a Thing that works really well when it's busy that isn't then just clunky when it's quiet it's sort of very difficult to to do one that's going to be 
good in every scenario. Um, yep. So I guess it's kind of just trying to find that middle ground that isn't awful in every scenario. <laughs> <laughs> And I think we can play a bit with scalability, but not to an extreme extent. What about a decay on those orbs? I was thinking about that. Yeah, like after after a certain time, it just automatically generates or something, or or it it just yeah disappears. Like if you have X number of time to use it, stash it, or lose it, or it, and then it's gone. Mm, oh. But but no full loot, you mean? No, you'd probably full loot it. You'd loot it off somebody. I don't know if it would refresh the timers. I don't know. It's just a... I'm just trying to think of, like... Because you were talking earlier, like... And if it's on a timer, that means you're going to be accumulating more, potentially, than you're spending. Which means there's just going to be a bajillion of them running around, eventually. Because somebody's going to, you know, cash in with however many people they looted and bounce, you know? So how do you, how do you prevent something like that? I think... We'll probably have to like test that in the beta when we have hopefully more players. Because I can indeed see a scenario where if if it's too hard or somehow too complex to actually materialize the loot, that it just ends up being the loot starts to accumulate on one player. And then it becomes like a, a passing on of the loot stack. <laughs> and, you know, there's like this player has all the loot and then you kill him and then it goes to the other player who becomes mm -hmm. the player with loot. And... Ding, 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 ding. Winner, winner, winner. I mean, I guess the other option would be that you don't lose all of your orbs when you die. You have like a chance to lose mm -hmm. an amount of them and it's mm -hmm. not a guaranteed chance. Like you won't always lose them. Sometimes mm -hmm. you might lose all of them. Sometimes you lose none. Sometimes you lose half. I think half I think half would be fair if you're going to do something like that or allow you to send some of them back in a I don't know send them send them back somehow automatically through a slash command or... we were um playing with the idea of being able to sell your orbs to the to the mer uh, to the conjurer instead of handing them in so selling them would give you, let's say, some gold and some XP instead of an item. Um, yep. And that could maybe like bypass the timer or, you know, depending on what you need. So it could like yeah, be a multi-purpose item, so to say. Could there be like levels of the orb as well to where you have like a, you can combine two or three lower to get the nice big glowy one or something like that yeah. i don't know yeah that was in the cars as well combining of a, co of a couple common orbs would be mm -hmm. shiny one yeah but again like this is all nice on paper but that's a lot of system development yeah. you're gonna put in and you've got that's so much bloat already you're gonna have to deal with exactly like at the end of the day it has to make sense and it has to like serve a purpose because if if the rvr doesn't get doesn't improve from it or if the the action doesn't improve from it or you know if the general play, gameplay doesn't improve from it we should probably do less instead of more because it's really easy to lose yourself in these creative things and then end up with i don't know some kind of weird system like the shit on eden or something like where you're PVEing for RPs, and then, yeah, I don't know. It, it can it can really sidetrack you really quickly. I mean, love or hate the bigger groups. You know, I know people have kind of they don't like zerging, and I can understand why. But if a if all if if eight man was able to keep a server alive, we would still have. You know, these servers are small that are doing that. You have to have the filthy casuals running around too yeah and so we, we got to be friendly to those people and we can't drive them out otherwise you're just going to have Uthgard or whatever name your name your dead dead server so we gotta we gotta figure out something to keep them involved while not making it a big freaking zerg fest where it's just like keep yeah. keep surfing and like because that shit sucks too because if you want to go out and eight man and, and that's going on you're you're like 
<clears throat> at a disadvantage now if you don't participate in that. And if that's not your jam, well, then you're screwed, you know? So it's got it, it's got to be a, a system that everybody is kind of on equal footing and not there's not one way that's like going to just trump everyone else's fun way of or way of wanting to get fun. I'm strongly convinced that among the Sir community on Eden, for example, there's at least, I don't know, 40% 40, 40 of the player base that would be preferring to small men and solo casual RVR instead of Zerging if it was a viable alternative. But it's just at some point the Zerg becomes such a draw, not just because of how much RPs you can make, but also because it's it, it just dominates everything. Oh, it's the reality of safety in numbers. I mean, yeah, it's of course. It's virtual beats of what it is. Yeah, look at Planet Side. I mean, if you were to ever watch like the map on Planet Side, it's just a big ball of death. And and their ball of death is going the opposite direction counterclockwise. And it's like the snake eating its tail usually. So the big death balls never really collide because they know well, it's counterintuitive for us to clash. We'll just eat each other's tail. <laughs> we'll eat the stragglers. And so it'll, I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a problem for that. I think that's probably our biggest challenge to try and mitigate that kind of natural tendency a bit. But you can't discourage it either because that's what some people want to do. Oh, but, sure. But if you but if you create some something like a like a like a small man BG, where it's like just anybody that's in groups of threes or fives or whatever, and you pick your pick your poison. But then if you do that crap, very absolutely, exactly, exactly the problem. So it's like, what are you going to do? I think that's where I'm... old frontiers can really come in, in the sense that usually the surging is going to, you know, it's not really going to interfere with the other realms as much. So you could have like a Zerg going on in, in Odin's, for example, but then at the same time, if you port to Hadrian's, it's going to be a small man paradise for, for, for all that's, uh, if, if, I think if you, if you design it to, to allow for, for different play styles to coexist, then it will happen. I think the biggest problem in the past was there was either a mechanic that congr uh, concentrates all action or a very segregated mechanic that like like you say almost created BGs where this is the arena for that player and then this is the arena for that kind of player and everyone gets like their their little space but one, at the one end thing of the day, uh, people want to RVR. They don't want to like play a two v two PvP that much. I mean, we we did just mention on the segregation part, and I agree, it's it's bad for the community. But I would say that I have on numerous occasions ran across two eight mans that are probably on Discord or Teamspeak together, segregating themselves so they can just do these eight man eight v eight duels. And for all intents and purposes, as far as I'm concerned, that's just kill trading because you're on communications with each other and you're just consenting to just kill each other over and over again. So that's they're almost like doing that already. So absolutely. And I don't know. Can it is about the RP farming because if you were to offer them a BG option where they could go, hey, you can go and PVP your ass off, but you're not getting RPs for it, they'd never use it. So, well, maybe some would. I won't say no one would use it. Some would use it, but it would be kind of a sideline thing. We we are gonna try to facilitate first and foremost chaotic RVR, like nothing to do with like the set number versus set number or solo area or duo area or i think that really takes away the soul the soul of the of the game that is rvr um 
is going to be our biggest challenge, to be honest. So what you mean by that is, is no fair fight, right? Yeah, fuck that. There should be no fair fight. What do you mean fair fight? You know, it's like the best Agreed. fights are like five versus seven or, you know, you're a full group and you're fighting then this group and then that group adds and you're kiting back. And that's that's the most fun to me. And I, I bet you that most of the 8v8s are like, yeah, that's the most fun RVR. But the problem is it's it's very unreliable. It's rare. It's, you know... But, and then what happens is you navigate towards the next best thing, which for eight man is another eight man, because it's the best type of fight that you can consistently reproduce. But by doing so, you're, you're sacrificing, you know, the, the charm of, of actual RVR, which to me is, is such a, such a shame. You know, the game is so much more than just 8v8 or, or. Or even Zerg v Zerg, you know? Yeah, the keeps were, were implemented there for a reason. Like, it wasn't just big open fields with ways to portal in and that was it. They put that there for a reason. But you can't tell people that they're wrong for liking what they like. And if all they like is 8-man, that's, you know, that's what that's what they like, I guess. And that's cool. But we, you, you can't, like, leave the keeps on the sideline and, like shun the people that want to play that way so because that yeah. is kind of cool like getting in a defensive keep when you're in like an alamo and they're coming in dude that is a, that is a cool experience and it's rare <laughs> i feel like it's rare in the beginning of the servers it's nice but it gets rare in the in the later stages i think the challenge there is to make make it so that the keeps actually mean something for everyone not just for preservers or, or those who want to open the app or whatever you know, there needs to be a value in owning a keep, even for the eight man that just passes by. Some of the best battles I've ever had were New Frontiers, three realms on one keep. But if you if you incentivize by giving RPs for the keep, then it becomes like most people have complained about is the keep surfing. Then you're yeah. just going from keep to keep to keep to keep to keep because you're getting that that rp out of it and so you can't i don't think you can do it that way but if you can like put an area around a keep that says like this is the action zone if you want the you know i don't i don't you can't do it that way either because it's like it's like either way you do it you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't because yeah. people are going to abuse it any system you create people will look for a way to abuse it so it's almost better to just keep it fucking vanilla and just let it ride so could you do this per se say okay your your baseline is each realm has their six keeps or five keeps two four six keeps if you lose one you lose 10 percent of your overall realm points or when you lose another one you lose another 10 percent but let's say you have your six and then you take an additional one in hib or additional one in al you now get a as a realm an additional 15 percent realm point base i kind of like that actually. that way that way you're not incentivizing necessarily taking keeps, but you are incentivizing taking keeps where it's just not to at least hold your own. Yes, at least there's there's a benefit but also a penalty. Yeah, I think a diminishing returns past a hundred percent. I think that's a great idea actually, because that incentivizes you to at least realm pride keep your own shit. If you want to go get some other stuff, you're gonna get it five percent instead of ten. You know, so right. like that that would be way better, I think, because then it's not like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's an awesome idea. I I get what you're saying, and I agree with the with the idea behind it, but not necessarily with um, the RP gain metric as like a reward yeah, yeah, yeah. or a punishment. But we were so I'll I'll give you the better on a sliding scale, I guess. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, but. You mean like a percentage? It'd be a percent. Okay, so I think, correct me if I'm wrong. It'd be better to probably have it just be a percentage of RPs that you would gain, not necessarily that you will get RPs upon completing right. capping the keep. But like, you still got to go out and kill the dudes to get the right, RPs. Yeah. But you're gonna get a little bit more now because you helped at least hold your fucking keeps. You have all of your realm keeps. You've taken two from Hib and Mid versus, you know, oh, you got 12,000 for taking DC. 
Like, big fucking deal. Who cares? The, the problem with that is also always the risk of enforcing the strongest realm, right? Like, if you're already already getting rolled, your your XP gain, RP gain is getting capped, and if you die, you're feeding them extra hard, so to speak. So turn off that effect for whoever's got the best cap, or whoever's got the best realm, just turn that ability off. Yeah, because if Pills brings over his thing, he'll just capture everything, and then <laughs> there'll be no incentive for him to go out. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, my, my, I'll, I'll give you a brief overview of how we plan to organize OF. So basically, the biggest problem with OF is bottlenecking, um, both at the Malgates as well as at the, at, for instance, E main, where action gets way too, way too, um, way too dense, way too quickly, and run times, running from the, bo uh, the border keep to the action zone. So. The idea is to work with dynamic porting. So there are two points, one in Prefine, um, Champland, and Pennine, and one in the primary zone, which is E-Main, Hadrian's, and Odin's. And depending on the population, and also keep ownership, for example, you have the option as the home realm to port, let's say, to E-Main. Now, where this port is like at the at the border with Briefine, so basically at the point where you would normally run into uh, into E-Main from Briefine, around there you would just spawn, so you skip the the run. But this indirectly is um, an RP boost because you're spending less time running, faster to the action, faster to the PvP, faster to the potential kills, faster to the potential RPs. What you could do is make the keeps count for the, the conditions that uh, determine whether your, your portal point shifts from the entrance of E-Main back to like a zone a zone away to the to the border of Briefine, the closer to the border keeps which means now if you lose that point you gotta run for at least another two three minutes before you get to the action now if it scales dynamically it means the amount of enemies in e-main will have a have a factor but you can also say if enemies in e-main take Let's say they take a uh, Dun um and maybe Bolg or something. That um, is an extra multiplier to to push the the spawn point of Hibernia back to Briefine, which effectively means Hip has to run longer. They um, they're they're far, far farther removed every time from from their XP gain, and effectively they will get get less XP, uh, RPs. Um, but, but also, they get less fights, which is less fun, and yeah, you get the idea. So, in my view, that's a more um, subtle way to motivate uh, everyone to, to defend keeps and to fight for keeps. Because if you, can push, if, you, if you can push the home realm back, that means... You have much more access to their to their to their other keeps to their you know if you have if you have extra inf incentives for keeps and but i think that could be part of the system as well and and maybe the the rp um uh, influence we you guys talked about earlier could be also tied into it as well so you could, you could work with multiple layers of, of incentive incentivization and then on the other hand also um Think of ways to reward uh, non-organized keep defense participation. For instance, there's a group of Stelters that spots an eight-man coming in from the north. Um, putting that into bro chat could give them uh, an extra tick of RPs or an eight-man picking off uh, two small men circling the, the keep area would give them also participation. 
so that you not only get rewarded if you're inside the keep and defending or inside the keep and taking the lord but also like playing around that area you know playing strategically but not necessarily in a in a in a in a bowl of zergers and pv door players um i think like re revaluing the whole experience of fighting for a keep is is going to be really key as well as the incentivization yeah because you can't go too far to the to the keep side because then the eight mans kind of get lacked and mm -hmm. we'll hear about it and then they can't go the other way right so i don't know about the teleportation thing because i feel like if somebody's already got an advantage they're gonna they're gonna take that and it's just gonna hose that that realm even further <laughs> but i guess yeah, that's what sure. they've already got anyway the principle they've already... is that, that um the, the the point regresses regardless um yeah to a yeah, you, 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 yeah yeah it just accelerates the process of or decelerates it yeah yeah i, I mean i feel for hips having to run that that shit all the time yeah it's brutal <laughs> But, but yeah, that's like, I'm, I'm a bit um, anxious about OF because there's a lot of complexity and there's a lot of problems to be solved as well at the same time. We have ideas, but yeah. I don't think OF's your answer for long-term viability. The, the frontiers it's... themselves or... Just the just the size and the and e main, just the layout, the running, the time delay, like the keeps themselves. Like it's just like somebody mentioned earlier. I mean, that's that that worked great in two thousand. Not not now. You're gonna lose way too many people that are, they're just gonna log. They're not gonna run clear across fucking e main. Oh, like yeah, they're just no. gonna get off. That's why we have porters. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious to see how the porters work. I'm not. I'm with the other guy. I'm not a huge proponent of porters, but I mean, something's got to be different because nobody's gonna run across e main. I mean, no. I won't. I'll just tell you right now, I won't do it. I'll just log, and it doesn't mean that much to me. I mean, you got to keep in mind, most of people got two, three hours to play and spending 15 minutes to run across e main to get Zerg down. Yeah. They're just going to log off. Yeah, like, there's no it, ain't, it ain't going to happen. Yep. I think that's that's one of the biggest lessons that we learned from the past servers. Could, um, I mentioned it a long time ago but some and i can't remember who told me no but why don't we want to do alternating now i understand you don't want both of them at, up at the same time because it'll spread the fucking pop out way too much but nf to of like why can't there be like hey it's of weekend or nf weekend or whatever and it can it can switch around but give people the option i don't i i like of because i'm you know i like the old shit but i totally understand why people bitch um, I think we're quite confident in making OF work. And we'll probably try to pursue that uh, route first, but... Yeah, if... yeah, at least see what you've done. Have you guys yeah. used the terrain editors to go through and like try to fix some of this shit? Not I think most long. of the complaints are in like the ALB verticality yeah, is sure. going to kill everybody <laughs> running off a cliff. So basically what we want to do is we want to replace all the keeps with new frontiers keeps uh, except for the ones closest to the border keep just for nostalgia's sake uh, replace the relic keeps as well because they're problematic as hell <laughs> um, we want to flatten the terrain in Pennine well not make it like flat flat but flat, <laughs> lower the hills a bit we're gonna add um, ramps to the MG to the mile gates they're on our on our versions, they're already actually there, um, so that you can you're not forced through the the small entryway. You know, you you have the option to basically take the stairs like you would on the other side. You would be able to take the stairs on 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 this side as well. Could you put instead of ramps for for like? just emergent can you put fucking ladders instead like like siege ladders going up the up to the parapets we we considered putting a siege tower there but 
Yeah, if you could figure out a way to just move a ladder and it's, you know, just go up the ladder, that'd be freaking rad. The, that's actually, we haven't considered an, uh, just a regular ladder <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, you guys are going way over the top. But I think the part of it is also, it's not really a viable no if if it's too slow or too hard yeah to for sure or... yeah for sure it's but it would be just another point of entry that people can get up there and start disrupting and then you know all it takes is that shift in attention for somebody to make a play absolutely it's actually a good idea we could consider putting a ladder on like the other side like we have a ramp on, on one side of the of the mg but there's like two sides so Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of ladders, like three or four ladders on each side of the wall, in my opinion, and you'd be good to go. It'll definitely be something that's mostly used by small men because eight men is. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't know. Maybe they would make use of it at some point, but it's very risky. I mean, it is risky. Risk reward, maybe. Yeah. But you can still cast from on a ladder, right? You can get up there and start shooting through sure. the fucking windows. Sure, it's just a bit clunky. <laughs> Don't you think it's going to be um, kind of problematic for solos, especially the you know, shadow blades, infiltrators, and stuff? Because uh, the Mygates my have always been the place where they just gathered around and tried to sit close to the doors. For sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's you. Also, you, you can't really like we we considered even like opening a like a third pathway like in between the Mygates so where there's an opening or something. But you can't really open it too much either because then you run into the problem. That's the point of the mile game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can understand why stealth is like that because it's a funnel point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you get to pick your fight. You're like, oh, I don't let this guy go, let this guy go. Ah, this guy. I think it's absolutely then, crucial are, to have that, though. To, to some extent, yeah, but also the... Go ahead. What about a pathway between the two um, portal keeps? Yeah, that's what we considered as well. That way, the, the problem that way it's is, like it's 50 50. You know, you, they can't camp both. Sure, gates. but the problem is that you're creating um, a micro environment where there's two realms fighting each other, and the third realm is like kind of locked out of the action. It's, it's a uh, everybody gets kind of screwed somewhere. And so we kind of have to figure out where it is that we're going to get screwed. And so I, I don't know if it's a, uh, a right idea to do it that way. But I, as, a, as a guy that likes to run around small man or even solo sometimes, dude, I get fucking whacked at the mount gates so much. There's like, I just put my fucking, I just auto run and I just take my hands off the keyboard and I say, Jesus, take the keyboard. Because it's like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to even get to the door. You know, yeah. like there's no chance of yeah. for a fucking single guy because you're at the mercy of the people who get to pick their fights. So it's you can't have it to where like everyone's funneled through the through the fucking meat grinder that is the mile gates like there's got to be there a way be a way uh, yeah, at yes least, at, least at least more than diminish, one even yeah I mean. to diminish the risk of, of yeah but you can like yeah you can't overdo it so it's, it needs to be we'll have to test it you know it's but yeah so the mile gates, the the, ter the terrain, the boarding, uh, and then the keeps. And I think, honestly, those are the biggest problems. If you solve those, what's left? Yeah, time time to 50 being too slow or fast is going to be big. And, and then all the implementation of all those feet, the core features you mentioned, being smooth and buttery smooth right out the gate. Yeah, I mean, if you can get some people to get in there and help you guys start flushing out all the damn monsters and items that are going to... Yeah. I mean, dude, that is... That database has got to be a fucking monster. It is uh, getting pretty thick. But, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we've done a lot of work already. Like, almost all of the loot from half of the zones of mainland is finished. Well... There is polish still to do, but like it's ninety percent finished. Same with map placements. Um, crafting is 
you know, it, it's been rough going the last week, but we, we've we mostly finalized all the, res, the recipes now, which is the biggest chore. The classes are remarkably complete. There's some fine tuning here and there still to be done, and maybe some ability is missing here and there, but for the most part, like all the the big things like the cast speed of spells, uh, frequency of dots, uh, the types of arrays that are available, the scaling of the arrays, uh, all the customizations to the styles, uh, you know, side stones and all that kind of stuff. All that stuff is pretty much done. Like the, the, the way the classes are now is very close to how we're going to uh, market them as to test for the final, you know, uh, baseline from which we launch. So I think we, in a way, we're already pretty far, but in terms of polish, we're almost at the very beginning. But I think we're we're optimistic and uh, enthusiastic about getting uh, getting everything uh, in order. Uh, we're not going to have an idea for the next playtest. It's going to be like two months out, something uh, like that. So for the internal testers, the next test is going to be crafting probably. And with that, I mean um, the whole like the whole thing as much as we're um, planning to do it for now. And that is enhancing, uh, salvaging, trinketing, uh, all crafts um, and then checking out how all those crafted items work, descriptions, uh, you know, the, the, the values of everything, um, the reuses, the timers, uh, you know, all the technical details of crafting pretty much. Um, and then afterwards, I think MT said it somewhere, but I think crafting the drain key and I don't know, I forgot the third one, but those are probably the, the first two, three uh, topics that will pass. And I think crafting will be, I don't know, maybe two weeks or so should be able to, I don't know. It's hard to say. Crafting itself is almost done, but the enhancements, I'm not really sure how fast we can pro progress in that because we still need to think about how we're going to exactly um, allow al alchemy and spellcrafting to fit into that system. Um, spellcrafting is relatively straightforward. You can make it so spellcrafting enhances the existing stats of an item. Um, but alchemy, we're thinking of, of um, trading items that drop or are available through loot chests that are unlocked by, by exploration mechanics, which contain uh, maybe alchemy items, but also uh, a, a, a proc that you can apply to either item if you are an alchemist, and then that counts, for example, as an enhancement. We're not 100% certain about that yet, but that's in the cards and then fletching as well, which will be the regular crafting uh, enhancement mechanic as you know it now from tailoring and, and armor crafting and stuff. But it will be staves and bows, and the staves will also gain uh, a focus, a focus boost, so that not just the level increases but also the the focus that it gives. Um, so that, that needs to fi be finalized for crafting, and then Tranky is basically fixing the bridges. <laughs> you can fall through them at the moment, uh, at least the old ones. Um, the keep, the doors, um, the orb system to an extent, participation system, progression uh, to an extent I think is mostly fine. We're probably going to leave it like that. Uh, maybe the detection, detection systems, maybe. Uh, you know, ways for people to find players when there's really low pop or at least be notified that there are players and then auto grouping as well. And then yeah, I think that's probably for the coming month or two that we'll do uh, first crafting and then three ranking. And then we hope 
to be able to like do those kinds of tests relatively you know in rapid succession so to say not like oh now it's another three months before the next test it should be probably relatively quick uh between two tests hopefully but uh, it's hard to tell because progression is never a guarantee <laughs> I guess we can wrap up uh, unless there's any other questions and I'm going to take them. Yeah. Do you plan to introduce a second BG um, like on Utgard's uh, V1 where you could play into Drunky from level 45 to uh, 49? Um, no. No, because as i mentioned um, in the beginning i think we want to create an environment in the frontiers where there's as big of an incentive as possible for lower players to participate in rvr because if that happens the even the 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 biggest noobs at level 50 will have a chance of finding enemies that they can kill because they're lower level because they're they're maybe XPing or, you know, they're, they're easy pickings. But we want to make sure that, that the, those weaker players form a significant part of the ecosystem of RER. Because if you, if you have a BG, let's say, like Utgard had, which was, I don't know, 40, maybe 45 to 49 or something, what happens is you effectively take those players out of the frontiers population and then your frontiers population becomes only level 50s and more more specifically only level 50s who have uh gotten some round rank from from Chidranki. because if you start off as a level 50 round rank 2 people are going to be like oh you're round rank 2 dude uh you're missing all these arrays and it's, it's not really we're not going to invite you because you're you're not properly competitive um we want to do the opposite of that. We want to create an environment where even a level 37 player with RR2 is, I mean, he's never going to be competitive, right? But he's going to be heavily incentivized to, you know, try to make a kill or try to be part of a bigger group that's hunting other players or trying to fight small mans or, or maybe just XP in the frontiers and be part of, of that player base that can form the basis of of um of the of an ecosystem where smaller groups prey on xpers or or other small groups or soloers and from there you can build up a larger and larger ecosystem all the way up to full groups and eventually zergs but if you don't have that base layer if you don't have that layer of players who are able to um accept the death because the reward they get for trying to uh, be part of the frontier is worth um, the setback then uh, if you can if you can establish that group then everything can grow from there but if you take that away with the bg suddenly the entire threshold for competitiveness uh, lies at level 50 and then at least level r3 for for example and then at some point when the server starts aging, that round rank will start creeping up. Um, after five months, people will say, oh, you're round rank three. That's, that's not enough anymore, but, you know, because our enemies are now round rank eight. Um, so you need to at least have level round rank five, for instance. And that's what's happened in, in Arnold Card 1, Arnold Card 1 as well. Over time, the, the end game population became more and more... Um, they, they were the viable competitive level of, of end game of VR became smaller and smaller. It became more and more elite in the sense that you had to meet all these expectations or you really weren't welcome uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the ecosystem there. We want to break that open by making sure that the, the players post level 35 have no quote-unquote, other choice than go to the frontiers if they want to uh, progress in RVR. And I know it's 
probably wishful thinking to a certain degree because players can still just ignore ignore RVR to um, before level 50 and just PVE until, until 50 and then only participate in RVR when they're 50 and templated. But obviously we will try to make it so um, attractive to be part of the Frontiers as a non-50 that at least a portion of those players will decide, no, actually, um, let's just let's just do it. Let's just go to Frontiers. Let's just have fun. Um, and it'll, it'll be worth it in terms of progression, but also just in, in terms of RVR fun and then general play style and gameplay. That's, but they won't be bolstered, the right? Is that what right? you're saying? But they, but they won't be bolstered, bolstered right? No. It'll be the more raw experience. I have a feeling they're going to get steamrolled. They will. They will. And and but that's the thing. Like they'll have to get a little bit creative. For example, you're in a 30, 36 to forty XP group. Sure, you may want to go to the frontiers. You may want to pick a spot that's um, a little bit secluded, a little bit off the, off the main route. Uh, you know, maybe someone knows a good spot or whatever. And then after, let's say, 30 minutes, they're like, ah, we're kind of getting bored. Should we change spots or whatever? And then they roam, and then suddenly they're like, oh, we're actually close to Dodens or whatever, you know? Let's check it out. And then they kind of roll themselves into RVR indirectly. I don't expect that kind of group to be like, oh, just let's let's camp, uh, let's, let's camp E-Main or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to last long, but... I think if you incentivize the if incentivize them to at least be in the area, then and and if you make the rewards for coming into contact with with PvP, which is something that um, Uthgard one also did very very well, is you had the best experience if you were XPing in the frontiers, especially on Uthgard one in 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 old Agramon. Where you had great, great camps, great XP camps, and you would sit there, and suddenly you would get ganked by a small man or whatever, and yeah, sure, you would die two or two times out of three, but you'd take maybe one or two players with you, and you'd get like the XP you would get, which you would normally get only in an hour of XPing, so you were like super excited, you got you got some RPs, okay, sure you died, but you got more out of it than you than you lost. And yeah, sure, you're probably have to gonna move spots. You you're not gonna be able to go to that spot again. But at least and possible vengeance with a fifty coming to PR you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like that's if if you're if it's personal, then you're you maybe gonna try to bring some friends and, and try to really make a brawl out of it. And that's that's kind of the, the dynamic we're going for. I think dying always sucks, but there are ways in which dying is actually worth it. And that's I think that's the real challenge of of, of um, incentivizing those types of players. Yeah, I mean, I mean Darkness, Darkness Falls was the best example. As soon as it opens, everybody just gr jumps in, and uh, even if it closes, you just stay in there to uh, get XP. Yeah, and you know you you know you're gonna get steamrolled soon. Yeah, or later. you know you're gonna die exactly. Yeah. It's, it's coming up the exactly. stairs now. <laughs> yeah, that Darkness Falls is, is, is a brilliant concept. I I wouldn't be able to think of it if it, if it didn't already exist. And I, I would I would think that what I'm saying now is probably uh, wishful thinking like too much, but Uthgard 1, for example, is, is one of my big um, inspirations. Despite having like the, the BG, like you said, uh, 45 to 49, I think the way they set up um, the balance between progressing in RVR uh, and, and you know, motivating players to go there in the first place by, by adding an XP bonus, and then also rewarding them for for fighting enemies, if they if they end up fighting them, even if they lose, which was not really the case in Utgard, but then that idea originates from from Phoenix, for example, where you get uh, you get participation rewards and RPs for dying, and well, not necessarily directly for dying, but you know you get the idea. 
just for participating and being there uh, you get a take and yeah i think it's it's doable i i'm i'm very optimistic about it but it's very much theoretical for now but yeah in a nutshell that's why we're just going to work with uh, bg from 10 to 35 and then 36 plus is uh, all frontiers Okay, I think we're about two hours in. I suggest we uh, wrap it up here and then, you know, where to find me uh, in the Discord. And if you're not already a tester, uh, you're always welcome to uh, come help out.